In this episode, I will talk about Action Controller Live. And what Action Controller Live allows you to do is it allows your server to send messages to the client, which is exactly the opposite from what HTTP protocol does, right? I mean, it's still going to use HTTP protocol, but HTTP protocol was built in mind with a client server architecture where the client will usually request data from the server and then server would do all the necessary work to generate a response and then respond to the to the client and then client would you know use that data to either render a page if, if that's a browser or update a data if you if that's an Ajax call or maybe you're using a, a, an application such as a mobile app or a desktop app and then the data that gets returned can be used to update uh, certain aspects of the app. So that works fine in the context of a browser, right? For most web apps, the behavior is user driven. What I mean by that is you let's just say you want to Google something. Well, you would go to google.com or type something in your Omnibox, hit enter, and then basically that event would trigger the Google servers to generate a li uh, however many, 10 links that you may be interested in. And then that data gets returned and then your browser displays it, right? So uh, that's how web apps traditionally work. However, in certain cases, you would want the server to generate an event and notify the client. Now with mobile apps, um, you're probably familiar with uh, not push notifications or maybe you are building a chat, right? So if you have a chat application, whenever someone messages you, you would like to receive a message. The way that's done in Rails, well, one of the ways to do it is by using Action Controller Live. And to take advantage of this feature, you will need to change your, your default server. So your default server is, would be Webrick otherwise, but if you specified Puma, for example, in the gem file and run bundle install or just bundle, uh, what's going to happen is Puma will take precedence over Webrick and when you run Rails server, and we're going to do that now, Rails server, you will see, not Rails console, Rails server, you will see it's booting Puma. So it will detect Puma and and run Puma instead. And the reason why we're running Puma is because we would like to, we would like the client to make a request to the server and then keep that connection open. And then whenever a server wants to send a, send some sort of a message to the client, it will respond without closing the connection. So it will just respond and keep the connection open so we can respond in the future as well. So, the reason why Webrick doesn't work, if if we were to use Webrick, the so Webrick caches and buffers, well, it buffers really, doesn't cache responses. So it would not send anything to the client unless the entire response was generated. So once you uh, install Puma, you can go here, you can see I created a simple messages controller and it only has one action, and I'm not even sure if index is the right action for this, but um, I just did it because it was simple. You can use, maybe it would be uh, show if, you, if you're going to pass a channel to make it restful. So anyway, so, the, so what you need to do is in your controller, you need to include module action controller colon colon live. And what that allows you to do, it allows you to do... Um, this line. It allows you to stream the response. So here basically what we're doing, we are setting the content type to text event stream and 10 times we're going to write hello world with one second sleep in between. And, um, and once that's done, we're going to close the stream. And we also need to close the stream in case some error happens in our application. Uh, we will need to basically rescue and we're not rescuing here, but we're ensuring that the stream gets closed because if it doesn't get get closed, then the thread or the process that's processing this request 
is going to stay open. And we don't want that to happen. We don't want it to stay open, not serving anybody. So we want to close it so then it becomes available and uh, serve other clients in the future. So let's give this a shot. So I, I ran the server already. So when I type localhost 3000 slash messages, what's going to happen, what I expect to happen is I expect to see hello world printed every second 10 times and then the response would um, be final. So, and that's exactly what's happening. So, as you can see every second, hello world is being, being printed out. You see the, the page is not finished, has not finished loading yet. It just finished. So you don't have to close this ever, really. You can keep it open and your client can reconnect in case the connection gets um, disconnected. So that's it for today. Uh, Action Controller Live. I hope you found this video useful and thank you for watching.